Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video on some email responses today. I'm just going to read the emails exactly. The first one I wanted to respond to was from Mr. Zachary Morrow. Uh, first of all, thank you for the compliment. He said, first of all, it's been too long since you've made a video. I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say your knowledge, expertise, opinions, and bubbly personality are missed. On another note, I'm thinking that my brachypelmate erratum is in premolt, but I'm still not very sure. Uh, he goes on to say, my real question is that they say tarantulas need humidity for a molt, and I'm also told my tarantula does not like humidity, so when I believe she's going premolt, how should I increase the humidity, if at all? I wanted to address Zachary's question because this is the type of question that I've gotten multiple times. The first thing I wanted to address was why it has been so long since I have posted. I know I was trying to publish about two episodes a week for a while there and was keeping up, but most of you all know I'm a teacher and a student, and I've just been hammered by end of the semester work, finals, and whatnot. In addition to that, my grandmother passed away about two weeks ago, and so in this video I wanted to commemorate her and I would like to show just a couple minutes of the last footage that I have of her. Hi guys, I have a very special video for you today. I'm outside of Hamilton, Montana on a farm where I spent lots of my time in the summers with my grandparents. Grandpa's gone now but my grandma's still here and she actually helped me catch my very first frog. So that's what got all this started, and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of where I caught some of my very first reptiles. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> Secondly, I wanted to address his question about desert tarantulas trying to molt. So this here is a young Brachypelma erratum. You can see it is somewhat similar to the Mexican red knee, which is Brachypelma smithi. resembles it in some way, but it's definitely different. I think this one's special and unique and beautiful. It is true that desert animals do not enjoy or require as much humidity as a jungle animal. However, I have found that uh, they can molt more effectively and more comfortably in a more humid environment. So what I like to do is vary the humidity from one side of the habitat to the other. Typically, I like for one side of the habitat to be about 50 to 80 percent humidity with the other side being very dry so the animal can choose kind of what they need at that time and I will see that they do go back and forth from one side to the other when I notice that they're pre-molt I amp that moisture up to 70 to 90 percent and I have found that my animals very often molt quickly and comfortably and whether you should do this or not is up to you. I don't know that I would call myself an expert, but that is what has been successful for me. I live in the desert myself, so I have to mimic the humidity as we don't have a lot of natural humidity. And so that is what I do for a desert dwelling species who is pre-molt. So Zach, I hope that answers your question. The next email was a recent one from Wesley Pauls, and he wrote, Hi, my Brachypelma vegans is acting a little weird. She walks slightly more robotically, and she's holding her legs closer to herself. Any ideas what could be going on? Now, of course, since I can't see your animal, and I don't know all the details, I can't make a true diagnosis. However, uh, this is a Brachypelma vegans that's in good health. And she is, you know, got a nice wide leg span. Often when you see an animal curling in their legs, they are either dehydrated or possibly near the end of their life. Whether that's due to dehydration or old age, what I would do in this case is boost the humidity and possibly put that animal in a triage tank trying to uh, just give it the best care that you can. Sometimes they can pull out of something like that and sometimes they don't. So often when you see an animal curling in like that, either that means they are getting ready to molt, they're at the end of their life, or they just may be dehydrated. So I hope that answers your question, Wesley. On a side note, this female was bred to the male from Big Smoke Show Joe. I hope I said that right. And he sent me a few males that we have paired with. So. Fingers crossed for babies for us. 
The next question was from Tyler Church, and he emailed me at deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com. And he was asking if I have any uh, Vicularia Versicolor for sale right now. And I do have just a few. He had asked for pictures of the animals, so I decided to do him one better and just show a video of these little darlings. As you all know, baby Versicolor are bright blue. And this light doesn't do them any justice, but they are quite beautiful. These were reproduced from my mail by Jerry De La Cruz, or uh, his channel is Axis Denied. He's one of my friends out of San Antonio. Awesome guy if you can buy from him at any time. I strongly encourage you. He has beautiful animals. And so Tyler Church, this little Versicolor was for you. I do have a few left and they are $25 a piece. I want to thank all my viewers for your faithful watching. In addition to these other questions, I had a few questions that I did not know the answers to, and so I conferred with one of the world's leading experts, Mr. Rick West, and so we were emailing. Here's the first question. Which tarantula is known to be the first species that lived in this world and the oldest of the old world species that are currently available in the market? Rick said, the earliest known fossil theraphosid spider is Ischnocolonopsis acutus which was found in the Miocene Dominican Amber. The estimated date for this species is between 20 and 23 million years ago. He also says that the oldest old world mygalomorph spider found occasionally in the pet trade to this day is Lephistius subspecies, which are living fossils. They're mygalomorph spiders with remnants of segmentation on their abdomen. So that is very cool. Uh, cheers, Rick. Uh, another question another viewer had was whether there are any theraphosids in Europe. Yes, there is Ischnocolus valentinus found in Spain and four species of Chytopelma found in Cyprus and Turkey, all considered countries in Europe. Hope that helps Rick. So those were the answers to some of the questions that I had that I didn't know the answers to. So thank you for asking because I was able to learn a little bit and visit with Rick West. I hope that answers some more of your questions. Keep sending them. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm loving all this feedback and I'll see you guys soon.